My name is Charles Perry, and I'm the director of the Black Cowboy documentary. You tuning in to Young Black Equestrians. I am. I am. I am a young. I am a young. I am a young. I am. And I am a young. Black. A young black. Young black. A young black. Black. Black equestrian. 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 Black equestrian. Equestrian. Black equestrian. Equestrian. Black equestrian. I'm a young black equestrian. I am a young black equestrian. Thank you, Eddie G9999, for this amazing review. And don't forget, go leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and you can be featured in one of our next episodes. Welcome to another episode of Young Black Equestrians with your hosts, Abriana Johnson and Caitlin Gooch. We are here today with Charles Perry, who is the director of the black cowboy documentary so welcome to the show charles thank you for having me so let's go ahead and get this started tell us where you are from what you do and how you got to be doing this amazing work that you're doing yeah you know the story it depends like if i go on my on a date it's a long story so i remember how to like shrinking down some Mm -hmm. and so yeah, I'm from Los Angeles, California. You know, I went to college in Mont- Wyoming and then I transferred over to Montana State. You know, I went out there to pretty much get out of um, the hood, you know, where I'm from. I always liked the outdoors, you know, you never saw a lot of pe- black people doing it, you know. And so, um, yeah, I went to Montana so I can um, play ball and, and uh, be outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, what's the last part of that question? See, you can't go. go, go. <laughs> Just uh, so, so the work you do now, the Black Cowboy documentary, how'd yeah. that come about? How'd you get into that from oh, well, playing ball in Montana? Well, it's, it's all related, you know, because um, this is where the seeds of what I'm doing started. You know, I've always been a big fan of history. It's a story to me. You know, who didn't like sitting on grandmother's lap, or at least the people who had the luxury of, um, of growing up with a grandmother like your real mother, you know, I had a luxury, so I had a lot of stories told to me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, art of storytelling is one of those things where, you know, you like hearing it. And and when history, when I took history, I I saw it as a story. Then you notice where um, there was no, you know, black people, you know, in history that was represented in a positive way. You know, you have slavery, horrible, you know, which they're trying to get off the books for some reason. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, civil rights, but really, you know, and to give us a couple of people like George Washington Carver, Venerable Peanut Butter, that's great. But like, I want a cowboy. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, I want a warrior. I want, I want somebody who like picked up a gun during World War One or two and like, and, and took the hill and saved everybody. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted somebody who looked like me, because I know there was more to our history than just um, on civil rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so when I went to college in Montana, I saw a black cowboy at a rodeo. I thought he was adopted. And I got all, I got like good grades in um, like my history classes or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And so like it didn't register to me. So naturally, naturally, I think like, okay, I had... Um, my experiences with black cowboys on television, Magnific- Magnificent Seven, like the Disney Washington one kind of, you know, cowboy, but that's an outlier. Right. You know, that's an outlier. Like, you know, Yao Ming, you know, Chinese basketball player, you know, he's good. And there's a lot of hoopers in China, don't get me wrong, but he's an outlier, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, and so like, I just saw black cowboys at outliers too, when you see them and they make them that until you dig into the history a lot more Mm -hmm. yeah so how did you get into journalism and like becoming (laughs) this director i'm not i'm not a journalist (laughs) i'm not at all well i mean like telling the story how did how did how did that transition happen i mean i've always been a space cadet spacey 
you know like i it was it's my it's my strength and my weakness at the same time because you will hear me go off on a tangent really quick because i another i butterfly of idea come off that pretty good and i start looking another way mm-hmm. you know so i'm spacey and always been and not like i wasn't paying attention you just you know so other people words sparks other ideas mm-hmm. and that's why i like um people who are smarter than me and a small smart smart black woman you know like I need somebody to challenge me and give me more ideas. And I want to do the same for her. And so, like, this is, this is the way I think, you know? And so, like, um, you know, I, I know I know more about Black history. I know there was more. And then, like, I get ideas. Like, okay, who who did what? You know? And you start making sense. Mm-hmm. You know? And then it start making sense that, um, you know, um, how we don't know our history. If you were never taught, then how would you know? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then you have your grandfather's stories and that's all verbal stuff. And my grandmother's stories, don't get me wrong, I love them, but those are uniquely my stories and the other grandkids that she told, you know, and, and it doesn't really to be taken seriously. And so you need to back it up. Right. And so when I did a documentary, you know, I got um, a uh, author, a really, really good author named Art Burden. He wrote about like three, four books on um, African-American history, expansion in the West. You know, I just knock on his door. He just thought it was crazy because I had this crazy idea that I had to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's crazy. You know, and um, and I showed up to his doorstep, and um, and it took him like three years to let me in, pretty much. <laughs> wow. You know, and and that's how I met um, Caitlin too. Like, you know, Caitlin. Sorry, um, I was um near um, you know, I was near you in North Carolina. I was like kind of. Sp- in between places and staying with my friend in um, Asheville, North Carolina, and I was so close to you, so close. You know, it's there, I'm like, and I didn't have a car. I was like, okay, how am I gonna get to this one? You know, because I wanna film you. And so it didn't uh, work out, but it was important for me to show, you know, people who are living a life right now because it's just not made up. It is just didn't happen this year. Mm-hmm. It's your father, it's your great grandfather, it's before him, and like, you know, and these horse traditions that we have, I mean, it's been throughout the years. And so to meet a person like, you know, Black women who just not just, you know, move to LA and can afford a house because they always want a pony. I'm like talking about like you grew up on a pony. I mean, your dad placed you on a pony type of situations is like um, a sight that I think people need to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned you were spacey, but you've been sticking with this project for five whole years. Um, yeah, I'm spacey still within structure. <laughs> you know, within structure. I mean, I'm spacey within the structure. So uh-huh. like, like cowboys. Okay, what about my black women over here? And then what about what about the black kids? And what about these? And you know, and like, and and but it's in the it's of a whole though, right? Yeah, that sounds like us. I was about to say. <laughs> all the way we are the same way like we do a thousand things but they all have to do with horses right. yeah yeah all had to do with horses yeah but like um but to, to know the um true story of um us us being you know black history to know the true story you need to turn over every rock mm. yeah. you can't just like focus on you know martha Luther king oh i was you gonna know? say that earlier I mean, yes yeah, you know, I want to know his janitor, what he, what his story is, and how he got there. Mm-hmm. The, and that's the base. That's the base of everything. And that, and you find out that's the base of our country. Mm-hmm. Who do you think did all the dirty work? Oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But but it's not it's not told. And when you when you Google Google Lazy Town like, um, and watch the Bucks Bunny cartoon when. It is, you know, and to depict black people in a black town being lazy. Mm-hmm. During the same time, Black Wall Street was thriving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and like, and we are capable. I mean, as human beings, we are capable. You know, it's not like, you know, we're better than anybody else mm-hmm. as being black. I'm not saying that, but like, you know, I, I'm assuming that if you, if you, I mean, this is a, this is a pure na- analogy. If you dropped off, a thousand Norwegians in the middle of Africa. You know what's going to happen? They're going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. They're going to figure it out. You know, dump off like you know, give black slaves, the people who built the country, 
freedom to do what they want, guess what they did? They figured it out. Mm-hmm. You know, go, oh, guess who did all the buildings? Oh, black. Oh, guess who did all the, who, who did, especially who did the sewage? Mm-hmm. Who did, did all that? Mm-hmm. Who's doing it now? You know, and so like I see all these stories and now I get to go back in time um, and and the people who told me what did black people do for the United States, those same people in my mind, I, I'm, um, I'm correcting them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And in a way, that's the thing that drives me. Just, just that little moment that happened a long time ago when talk, somebody told me what did black people did do in, um, in our history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like um, I'm feel a little bit satisfied now. And so this is why it's taken five years to do all this because it's, it's not just, um, you know, one off or like, you know, just a little tiny corner. No, no, it, it I've been, I mean, I have a, I'm, all parts. I even went to Germany, oh, wow. you know, and teaching people about, you know, black history and like where we're from and what we're doing, you know, and the difference between, you know, um, you know, suffrage, there, there's differences between like suffrage, you know, don't get me wrong, like um, um, other people suffer too, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of suffrage, like, the, you know, Israel and, and uh, you know, the Uyghurs up in uh, China, you know, they, they suffer, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and the different types, you know, but uh, different degrees to it, but like, we haven't, ours haven't really been acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, to like, and right now during this time, like, is this all coming out? Mm-hmm. And it's amazing that like, I feel like amazing that like this little time documentary with no money, start off with zero dollars, really. You know, I had to save money to like go out to a mogi on my own, you know, so I can like, you know, shoot first and then raise for money and then raise money, you know? Right, right. Because someone's not going to take me seriously. I already know that. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you know, when you start, you know, accomplishing some things, now you got to watch out for the sharks. It's crazy, mm-hmm. you know? Yes, you yes. Know? We've, we've experienced a, a similar, you know, we're not traveling all over the world just yet, but we've experienced a similar um, kind of series of events as far as, you know, having to go out there and do the work, do the work and do the work before getting any kind of attention or, you know, help. And then now people are like, no, we, I, I'm going to come down. Like I have a sprinter van now, mm-hmm. you know, I have a sprinter van. Like I have all, everything I need in the van. Mm-hmm. Every place to sleep, <laughs> you know, I mean, I stay in an apartment, but then I hop in a van and load everything up there. I'm coming down to North Carolina. Yeah. Hey. All I need, all I need is electrical, some electrical and um, use your bathroom. Like, <laughs> that is perfectly fine. We can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm like camper too. So I'm, I want to be outside actually, you know, I'm yeah. under the hammock in the North Carolina sun our stars or whatever i'm trying to yeah, say we have some amazing stars out here <laughs> but, um, no but i mean this is this is why i love it i love what you guys are doing i love it you know i want to be a part of it yeah, yeah i want to do my part to um you know push us along because our content needs to be shared in the correct way yes yes in the correct way that is very very true very true. Yeah. So how is how is this documentary kind of affected your life, your personal life, your, Man. you know, just everything? Where to start? I didn't know what I signed up for. Really, I didn't. But I'm obsessive. You know, I get obsessed. You know, I get passionate about, you know, if you ever go to my Instagram, you will see the things I'm passionate about. It was basketball. It was snowboarding. And it was on um, filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's my newest one. Mm-hmm. You know, basketball, I took the farthest I could. Snowboarding, believe it or not, came from black people don't do that. I was like, oh, this black man does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and um, so I learned how to snowboard and, and be really good at it, you know. And, um, and now filmmaking. And so I don't stop it until it's over. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm living here in Tulsa. You know, I'm not going to stop. 
you know, and, um, and, and not only that is, you know, if you make it about other people, right? If I make it about, you know, coming out here to have an impact and coming out here to, to, um, to see the differences that they don't see, you know, and sometimes you're too close to home, you know, and then I'm living out of it. And so how about if I go get some, you know, Hollywood money, you know, or some, I, I'm not been calling Hollywood money. So you go ahead and delete that part, but like <laughs> get some like fundraising money, like from, um, you know, from um, crowdfunding and like selling t-shirts and hustling and all my back pocket or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and bring that from the outside back into the community here, you know, then like, I feel like I'm doing my part. Yeah. You know? And, and I satisfy what I want to do. And so if I feel like if I make it about the others, then I'm satisfied either way, because I'm going to make sure I take my commission from that, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but just enough to keep me going. It was fair. Yeah. And so like, how can I do that with um, over here? And, you know, is in my best interest for you to succeed? I mm-hmm. mean, we're on the same mission. Yeah, totally. Is a Am great I talking thing too much? To recognize that, like, we're no, in- this is a podcast. You're supposed to talk. I'm talking too much. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I we're just soaking it in, soaking right. it. Hey, because it's nice to have someone who thinks you know the same way and can say, "Hey, we are working towards the same mission. I'm not in competition with you. I'm here to help you move forward, and we're here to help you move forward." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the whole gist of it. I mean, are are we in it as black people for ourselves? And we are. We need to take a second look at ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have the same privileges as other people. We just right. don't. And I mean, I see it. I'm actually understand it. Mm-hmm. Feel like, I mean, because you know, inadvertently, I lived in both areas. Like I lived in Montana, right, middle of nowhere, on Montana, day to the farmer's daughter. You know, I hard working, stay humble, man. Montana people will love you, no matter who, like who you are. It was like you, yeah. You know, and so that's what I did. But then you get in these conversations where you know it, it, it's it's the same. You know, being a cowboy from um, you know, um, let's say you know a privileged cowboy, if you want to call it that are, you know, a black cowboy, you know, it's the same to a point because when I, after that point, you become black. But to that point, you know, as long as you, know, you hit that point, if you don't go past it, then, you know, you can have good relationships. Yeah. If you don't go past that point. But once you start going past, people start getting uncomfortable. And, um, and I always wonder why that was, you know, like why my friends over here, you know, get a little bit uncomfortable, you know, but you can see some cultural things that are the same, like the black church. You know, I go to a black church here in Oklahoma and Preston, mm-hmm. you know, with a family called the Bagby family, you know, they have, like, they like, you know, the grandmother had about 12 kids. My grandmother had about 12 kids, mm-hmm. right? My grandmother is a matriarch of the church and played the piano and is, you know, matriarch. It's the same thing. I honestly go to the church and I come out and I realize, oh, that's right. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm not in Watts. Right. You know, it would smell the same inside, mm-hmm. you know? And so like, you know, you figure out, you know, things across the country is stay constant with certain things, you know, within cultures, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, and I don't know how many people go to the church in the middle of nowhere Watts. <laughs> if this is the middle of nowhere Watts. In the middle of nowhere Oklahoma, you know, and, um, and have the same experiences and see the same similarities, you know, and then, and do the same thing. And, um, from, you know, let's say Palos Verdes, California to, um, you know, Montana, you know, you see similarities there. So. Right. Right. What is your favorite part of this entire documentary process? Connections, the connections I make. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I don't know you, you know, and uh, Miss Gooch. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your new name? <laughs> Salam. <laughs> Excuse me. Salam. Salam, Miss Salam. You know, I even though we never met, I feel like I know you. Yeah. You know, and um, I feel like um, you know, connected to you. 
you know, even though I don't even know you, I never met you. I'm like, I got to put two together, you know, or I see your real life, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, that make it put sense to it, but I got a good feeling. It's the same as my imagination, you know, and, um, you know, what keeps me going is like the relationship building and plus, um, you know, I had this thought in my mind, I can't stop. And then the third thing, and the most important is I'm under contract. <laughs> I got a contract and I need to get this thing out. You know, they're not getting the money back at all. So I better I better get this thing going before I ruin my credit. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. My Important for sure. <laughs> yeah. So when contracts. What'd you say? I said no breaking contracts. No breaking no, no breaking contracts. But you know, and I mean, some of the contracts, I mean, this is what important for filmmakers and, and you too, moving forward, get it on paper, contract, 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 contract before you even start, mm -hmm. you know, contract, contract before you start, believe me, you know, um, save some headaches, you know, save a lot of headaches, contract, contract, you know, get it on paper. You know, and these are some of the weaknesses as, um, you know, creatives and especially African American creatives. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna play in this. We're gonna play in this world. Then we gotta, you know, this film world and this creative world. We gotta live by the rules, mm -hmm. unless you don't get in trouble. That's so. Don't let me go off on tangents. <laughs> I mean, we're learning. Shoot. Right. We are learning. We are entering into this space that we didn't even know this was going to lead into. This podcasting space is so vast and it's constantly oh, changing. We should be talking about horses though, all right? Like I mean, I know, but we are we are learning, okay? We if you're helping us, it doesn't matter how. <laughs> But you're right. This we are talking about you here. So, um, when when is when can we expect this documentary? Um, you want to um, well, you record. I was gonna show you a teaser. I can. Can you share your screen? Like we can make this. But happen. you you got that record button on there. Ah. Uh. Okay, well, you can just wait. Show wait, me. after after end of it, at I, the uh, end, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, at, at the, the end. end. But but it's gonna be in an edit screen though, just to let you know. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right, so we'll just move on to the. I was about to say, so we're gonna end the podcast. <laughs> no, no. This is, we'll just move on to the next next question. So, um, oh, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Have you rode a horse since doing this or even before? My brother has. Yes, for a second. A second. Like, so yeah. no. Well, like, you know, <laughs> I I I mean I want to ride a horse. I do really do, but I'm like an all-in guy. Mm -hmm. Right? And so like I can't have fun when I want to um, make this film. You know, like I know that sounds kind of um um lame or whatever you want to say but like um when i'm at work i'm at work mm -hmm. you know and i want to film everybody else um you know riding horses and having fun i put my brother on a horse and i take pictures of him and like even though i want to do it but like this is more important you know have to do it when you come to North Carolina. <laughs> I was about to say, so basically once it comes out, like we getting you on high ho silver and getting you up out of here. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> you look a little nervous. I look nervous. Yeah. <laughs> like. Uh oh. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the right light. <laughs> That's what it is. Is I'm trying to find the right light here. I'm yeah. Like, there you yeah. go. <laughs> so, have you even thought about what happens post documentary? Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Um. You know. I'm in. I have a good transition on uh, work that I'm working on out here, you know. Good. Um, you know, I developed a um, like reality TV show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I developed it and that, you know, but then I make sure in that, you know, I get the proper paperwork in place, contract, contracts, contracts before I get deeper into it. 
you know, and the whole point is like, it, it can totally work, you know, it can totally work, you know, this crazy, like, you know, dream that I had of like, becoming a film director and like living, leaving a job, working in a hotel and leaving a condo, leaving a woman, you know, leaving like my apartment, leaving my city, you know, to hit the road to do this, you know, and to see it like so close and like on the horizon, it's like, it's refreshing, it's, it's motivating now, you know? And so I'm like, okay, what well, I'm gonna do next. And so all, and, and what the, the the side effect and I didn't know this was going to happen that um I like almost became a um like an expert type of person the behind the scenes I know who who who's now I know where that kind of cowboy this kind of cowboy I know about the gangster cowboys I know about the whatever cowboys I mean I I know who's who now mm-hmm. before I was just like amazed out of everybody you know at first I'm like wait a minute you just have a hat <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know and um and i figure it out you know people who like talking to me and then they, they jive with me a little bit you know at first you know you just you don't know if you don't know you know right mm-hmm. the true yeah. cowboys versus the yeah I got my boots my boots <laughs> off amazon <laughs> but but i mean but i've been on both sides of it and like you know i've seen cowboys in montana that you know have the get up or whatever and they get inside their little tiny um prius mm-hmm. i was like wait a minute for a cowboy zone right never ride on the prius you know like is that possible no it's not you got a truck are you are you walking right. <laughs> no are you walking i got a jeep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you know, I know, but you know, what I mean, like a like a real like you know, middle of nowhere Montana cowboy, you know, yeah, or um, yeah, or yeah, Oklahoma yeah. cowboy, you know, you don't <laughs> see, you know, the bull riders rolling up in the Prius. So let's, I mean, maybe I don't know, maybe it's a new school out there, the, the millennial cowboy, maybe they will. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, yes, it is I so know, fun. It's so funny because we just recorded um, an episode for the podcast, literally like right before. And we were talking about all like the, the sheer possibility of things, you know, literally anything that you put your mind to and put the work behind, like you can make it happen. And I think it's, it's so funny that we talked to you immediately after that, because you're a testament to making that happen well it's still not over with yet though <laughs> i'm telling you that much um yeah you know that's when you can't let off the gas you know and you can't you know as soon as you start relaxing you know it's over when it's over mm-hmm. you know it's tough it's been a, it's been a really tough road yeah you know i mean i could i gotta do a bullet points and tell me um tell me if you think it's real or um, false okay all right bullet points okay things that happened um um i lived in a cabin in the middle of nowhere montana for a winter and worked at a bar called the white front that sounds plausible it sounds like it's true ding 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 yeah it's true (laughs) Yeah, you got me, all right. Well, I maybe I gave too many details. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I'm like thinking like I'm a detailed person, so I'm like I'm gonna tell you the scenes and like oh, it was a sunny day. You know? <laughs> 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 um it's like too many details for every line, so I'm like, whatever. Um okay. Um what's next? Had a um fellow filmmaker leave me in kansas oh my gosh <laughs> that's gotta be true what happened <laughs> i don't know i want to say true, true. Too. it's totally true it's totally true and then that's the um that's the background of um um the story is that like you know my personal story you know has been <laughs> it is i can't understand why i'm smiling right now because i feel like i got through it yeah you know and the only way to like you know 
you know, prove people wrong, then like who you are is is finish what you start. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like I've been told like on things like, hey, you know, oh my, these are from people that I knew that they thought I was like going around the country hustling people for money. Mm. You know, I'm like, no, actually, it's opposite. I was I dug ditches. And um, I dug ditches before construction. I um, shoveled snow for money. I um, I deliver ice in Chicago in the wintertime. I get, who knew people need ice in the wintertime, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, I house sat, I drove people places, I did whatever it took to get me to the next spot. You know, I made, oh, and that's not including like, you know, my bread and butter's weddings and and um, corporate videos that I always go back to and make money there to bring back, you know, for, to bring back to continue making this film. Mm-hmm. And then lo and behold, like, you know, I had to fly to Montana to go get some camera equipment that, you know, the horrible production stories that you figure out that, you know, people take things, mm-hmm. you know? And so I had somebody take my own um, hard drives and my camera and one of my cameras and what to give it back. And so I had to, fly to the middle of nowhere montana to go break down this door i mean it sounds like i'm lying right now you know i'm glad i'm a filmmaker because guess what i got cell phone footage of <laughs> and um you know and like these these weird things that happen to you like that that like that going to tour you and then some people just want to um you know um don't have the same vision you know and and they take it in their own hands to try to slow you down or something you know but like but that's the whole part of it. Then you find out, you find out like, you know, running a po- podcast, like what you're doing now, you know, to make it to um, bigger places, you know, and not like you want to be a big shot. You just want to do the best you can within your capabilities. We also want to be a big shot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to be a big shot too. <laughs> Yeah, right. But, TV show is coming. <laughs> but you got to accept this right now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's yeah. supposed to be hard. Yeah. 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 Right you right. know, like what quest, like Lord of the Rings, right? You know, you're familiar with that, right? What quest in like movie type quests like that, that people go on that you entertain with if everything is this nice and um, fluffy? Easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't watch it. You know, uh-huh. it's like, you, you, what are you talking about? It's like, you know, somebody going to deceive you. Somebody going to lie to you. Somebody going to steal from you. You go meet some friends. Somebody going to make a comeback. Like, mm-hmm. like this is the whole part of, um, you know, those, those, you know, shows are really based in reality if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like really I left a li- last five years. That's been my own journey. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I feel like we need a documentary about making the documentary, right? Oh, you know, a good podcast producers that can do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about us? Oh yeah, <laughs> like just yeah. chop in and check in. That's like, hmm. well, you you find out, especially in this industry, it's like who you know. You know, and then you find out it's in your best interest to help people along the way because those other people will come back to you are they going to need a part of your team in the future. Yeah, yeah, because we definitely want to shoot videos. I mean, I mean, okay, so you want to shoot video and like it's okay for other people to do other people's stories, right? And mm-hmm. and black, black stories has been told mainly, you know, it's controlled with a lot of whites, especially back in the day. Yeah. Nails a different story, but you know, you know, I go to the Mogi, you know, all black rodeo, and and you know, people got different um, reasons for being there as, a, as for media, you know. And this year, you know, the I think the BBC or somebody was there, interesting, you know, taking pictures and like, um, you know, the news was there, and now it's picking up steam, right? Mm-hmm. But the difference between the BBC or this person that is, um, you know, not black. You know, which is nothing wrong. No, and so when you edit this thing, there's nothing wrong with being uh, white and coming to a black rodeo. There's nothing wrong with that. Or taking pictures, or even doing a movie, or um, a spot, or whatever you want to do. Right. But, but me and but it's like let's take our black film crew and let's go to Ireland and talk about the potato famine. 
like of your what your grandmother lived in the way it told you you you, you know the story mm-hmm. and let me go out there and let me have my own opinion about like um you know how your people came to this country right. it'd be a totally different story right you know and that's why we don't know about black cowboys because when the people who are vision and what what the west was like and then include black people from them yeah stories of us by us yeah yeah i mean and 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 even with the black cowboy documentary like i have white people in it i have white cowboys in it because but it's like through the eyes of an african-american mm-hmm. you know which have white black Mexican, Chinese, I mean, our eyes have everything, you know, of, um, so why not white people being in black movies? Because we see white people in everyday life, right? you know, but we don't, but they don't know what kind of, you know, we don't, we, we don't, we get our jokes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. It's a cultural difference. It's a cultural difference. And being able to, to share that with someone who understands it's just a different kind of connection versus someone who's trying to explain what's happening, you know? Yeah. And it's important the culture, the culture that people don't know about that America doesn't know about, like the mainstream are the, I don't want to get away from political terms, but um, like the country, the country who, what they don't know about as a whole, you know, they get what, what information they get about, you know, African-Americans, it's not always the best. Right, right. You know, it's not always the best. And it's not always like, it's like, you know, people struggle and things happen and like, you know, gun violence and all that other stuff is like, you know, rampant in places like Chicago, Los Angeles, Detroit, you know? I mean, yeah, that's a fact, you know, but why? You know, if you ask yourself, if you honestly ask yourself why about five times, you figure it out. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but then, but how about the other stories that are not told, you know, like, you know, um, and more than, than the, the Rudy stories. I'm talking about like the, or this, this our culture period. Like, you know what? We helped build this country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did the dirty work. You know, the, the, the jobs that were like, you know, you know, you can hazard pay jobs. The hazard pay jobs, like, oh, I'm not doing that. And I have money. I know I'm not doing that. You could do that. Yeah. Those jobs, guess who was doing those jobs? Yeah. Some people didn't have an option. Yeah. Didn't have an option. Just go do it. Mm-hmm. Go go send, you know, Tom over there doing it. And that's not his real name. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, a, it was a black, you know, black man was doing that. Black women were doing those things. I mean, it was crazy. Even, you know, you find all these things out and it's like, why? I feel like if you would truly be open to like the true history of our country, then we will be in a totally different place. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We really would. Many people are not open to that reality just because it shows fault. But what better, but what better symbol, you know, to bridge that gap than the cowboy? Yeah. Yeah. Because the cowboy is the cowboy is the cowboy. It is until you hit that point, then it becomes different. Yeah. But it's a cowboy, it's a cowboy, it's a cowboy. I had a conversation with someone um, online, and um, he's releasing um, some t shirts, something like that. And he made a statement saying that this brand um, was not. I guess it was inspired by black cowboys, but it was not supposed to, I I think he meant his brand was not only for black people, but he was saying that we should just ignore black when it comes to cowboys, which was, that's why I was having a conversation with him about it, um, saying that the term black the term cowboy was coined for black horsemen because you didn't call white people boy way back in the day yeah um so so close your eyes right now and for like a lot let's say that you mr um 
New York, in the middle of New York and LA, you know, yeah. only places you've been in, in the city, never been outside of it. You know, people in LA, they think, uh, and New York too, if you drive like 50 miles outside of LA or New York, they think that's the country. <laughs> it's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they think that that's the country, those places, right? And so like, um, I kid you not, I lived in um, Upland for a second when I was back in um, LA and I had a, had a place there. And um, maybe it was like 40 miles outside of town, you know, and people are like, you live where? where up, Upland, where's that? 40 miles? Oh, that's such a long way, you know. Um, but getting back to your question, um, um, what was it? <laughs> what was your question? It was just basically a conversation on how when we represent ourselves or, or that it's okay to have things for Black people. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and hit in this guy's, I guess, defense, what he was saying was that this wasn't for Black people. It was just inspired for Black people. Or it wasn't just for Black people. And so I was just trying to tell him, like, it's okay. If you want to have this line that represents Black cowboys, like, that's fine. Yeah. You don't have to ha have, like, a happy medium that makes people that are not Black happy. No, I, yeah. I mean, I found my point. And the point I was trying to say is that, um, you know, like we touched on earlier, if you don't know about um, cowboys and your and your imagination is just the Marlboro Man, if I tell you I was going to a rodeo, the first thing you think of is all, you know, um, white people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you talk about like a horseman or a horsewoman, um, you know, you think of, um, you know, white people again. You know, you're talking about horsemen that was um, in Africa. You know, did you do you know about our horse culture in Africa? I do not really? personally, but we we've been learning. We have some friends that are in Africa and in France that have been educating us on the horse culture there. And so now, like you know, knowledge of history, right? And um, you know, you, you figure that Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, mm -hmm. right? Before, seven here, 700 years, 700 years before that, you know, um, Spain and, and parts of um, up in Europe and other countries that I'm not going to go in detail with because I don't know 100% for sure, <laughs> but definitely Spain, right? And other parts. That stretches out the like the Moors rule, which was Black Africans, mm -hmm. right? And they ruled for seven hundred years. Seven hundred. We know about the Christopher Columbus part, but why not go in into what they were doing and who were these people? Yeah. That ruled over here, you know. And then you find out like all these, um, you know, and they go in deeper, and then you find about the. Um, the Mao or the Gao Empire, you know, in Africa, and then, and then you think about like what would it take for you, uh, people, you know, to you have your imagination go a little bit deeper. Like, what does it take for people to rule a place for seven hundred years? All right, it takes horses. Yeah, some form of transportation. It takes right. boats. Like the big boat, so you see you know, that is uh, synonymous with um, England, mm -hmm. you know, with the cannons and France and Napoleon. I mean, I don't even know this for sure. I don't know. I haven't seen one, but um, I'm assuming if the um, if the Moors ruled over islands that they have boats. I can assume that one. Yeah, I think that's a good assumption. Yeah. And it probably looked the same as all the other boats in that time period. Yeah. You know, and so why do we don't have those images in our head? And we see now, all of a sudden now, I want to make that image for myself. I want to see a 1491, right before Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I want to see a black crew battling whatever they did back then. Mm -hmm. Because um, Spain got to get their freedom some kind of way. So do they have boats on those battles? And one is bl black crew. And I, I mean, I don't know, but that my imagination goes there, you know. And like, and I wanted to get that depicted in movies and films and books yes. and talked about. Yes, yes. And podcasts at the very beautiful equestrian um, podcast 
located in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> right. So what advice do you have or could you give for people who are aspiring filmmakers? Um, you got to figure out what you want. You know, I mean, you got to know what you want. That's with anything. It's not just filmmaking, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I feel like successful people, like really people who do the extraordinary think about two things, you know, they think about what they want and how they're going to get it. You know, I mean, what else to think about? Yeah, we, we talked about that earlier too. Yeah. I mean, that's within reason, of course, you know. But yeah. How, how's the podcast going? It's going all right? It is. It is. We are entering our fourth, technically, season, but we think that this is going to be our last season and we're not going to um, have any breaks because there's so many people that we need to talk to. So we're just going to keep producing episodes and scheduling them out and uh, holding these conversations with people. Well, I should come down. I'm serious about coming down to North Carolina. Are we serious too? All right. And so like right now I'm float I'm I'm a floater right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I um I'm staying at Airbnbs and apartments, you know, that I find online and so I can do this anywhere. And I forgot about this corona stuff. It's crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. How is that has that impacted the documentary in any way? No, 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 you got to roll with it. Like, um, I had to roll with it. I mean, I had a decision to make. You know, I had a decision. This is like my life dream, doing what I'm doing now. And, um, and sometimes you got to roll the dice. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to roll it. And so, you know, at first, you know, I was, you know, went to rodeo looking like I'm stepping on Mars. You know, all my PPE. <laughs> and nobody else has any on <laughs> no no like you know but you know you gotta you gotta we gotta make moves sometime you know and and we don't know about the virus or how it's gonna affect us but we know that it affects the black community more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's more i mean i'm i'm assuming we're gonna be the first with herd immunity <laughs> I hope so. Um, I hope so. Yeah. We got to have yeah. it. Let us. We got to have it. But you know, I don't know. I don't. I maybe I don't want to say this while we're recording as another conversation. But like, no, this there's um a lot of um strengths that um, you know, people developed, you know, over time. Mm -hmm. Like the movie Get Out. Was what, what about that movie? Like how. <laughs> how they were taking the black bodies because they were so strong. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly, you know. You know, it, it's this book called Taboo. And it talked about the differences of um, of um, different people from different regions and how to play a parts in sports, you know. You know, it posed a question like, you know, why do you see, you know, like a hundred yard dash or why do you see, you know, certain things and, and, Yes, yeah, it's, it's um genetically it's fun it's fun to see how that works you know because Ethiopians you know they can't I mean they're they're like are maybe um you know, people from Kenya you know the runners you know they come from certain regions and not really pulling out like football players right right you know right. so I don't know I'm just I'm just almost time to go now huh? <laughs> I'm talking about nothing <laughs> hey it's something it all relates. It all relates. It's a snowball effect. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and is this video going to be online too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. See, that's why I should have been obsessing about the light more. It's okay. It's okay. How's, how, how are you? How you married now, huh? How do you feel? Doesn't feel any different. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, how long? How long did you know him? You just met him. You, I mean, you just met him before you like a year before because I knew you before. How yeah. long you guys were together for? 
two years. Two years, okay. And so I've known you for like, I know of you for like three. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep, it just happened. Yeah. But oh. I mean, I've just been busy with all the horse life stuff and he's supportive of it. So, and then the pandemic. So it's not like, you know, we're out here traveling and honeymooning and <laughs> taking family vacations. I, I imagine it would be different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a, um, you know, I have all these ideas, like, you know, a quality, like, black cowboy film, you know, mm-hmm. but we're not calling it, like your friend said, um, we're not going to call it, like, we don't need to call it black, you know, going to start mainstreaming it. Yeah. But at first, in the initial push, I think you have to apply, like, this is a black cowboy mm-hmm. documentary instead of a cowboy documentary. Mm-hmm. people will get freaked out mm-hmm. you know it's like you expect them water and you get beer you yeah know, that would be spit just... it out yeah. yeah yeah you know or, or vice versa mm-hmm. you know you want beer but you get water you spit it out you know and like and so you expect them to see a cowboy film and you see um these black cowboys and some people are just not gonna go <laughs> <laughs> gonna explode a little bit right mm-hmm. oh so idea i got an idea now so at the very end it goes from the black cowboy and then fade out um black and it's the cowboy oh see yeah write that down <laughs> <laughs> because um you know that's what's about right there you know at the end of the day we're all cowboys we're all human we're all american you know, it's like it's us fun. trying to get people used to just saying equestrian, you know, like equestrian is kind of associated with like a white thing. And it's like, equestrian just means someone who rides a horse. Yeah. So everybody who rides a horse falls under that, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and people just don't understand the complexity, complexity of our history with, um, for example, um, there's a horse dentist here in um, Oklahoma, not that far away from here. And she's a, you know, black woman, you know, and I'm going to go talk to her and see her. And she doesn't think her life is special, but like, it just, it just shows me that we're in every facet of this country, even a horse dentist. Yeah. How many horse dentists do you know? One. Yeah. We interviewed one. Well, one black one, yeah. We yeah, one black one, one for the podcast. Yeah. But but like that proves my point that we always been, you know, horse people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so funny you say that that about them thinking their life is not interesting because we reach out to when we reach out to people, we're like, Oh my gosh, you know, we would love to have you on the podcast. And that is the response sometimes, like, what have I done? Like, what do you want me to talk about? It's like I clearly found you because you did something I thought was spectacular, sis. Like, you are amazing and you should tell me about it. I mean, it's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow. Like, I'm pretty introverted. You know, I had to force myself to, um, you know, put myself out here. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if you look at my beginning stuff, or you never see me at all, you know. Mm-hmm. And now I know that as a director, I have to, um, you know, put myself, I need, I need to put my face out there, mm-hmm. you know, and so I be grunges, I mean, I barely, barely want to, mm-hmm. you know, but I do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for chatting with us today. <laughs> wait, wait, I got one story to tell you though. What? One story, one, one Sundance story. Okay. All right. So I'm at Sundance, right? Just just not knowing anybody, right? Mm-hmm. And um and I get invited to um the Jewish Shabbat dinner. All right, or like like Sundance is all about the parties, right? Right. And so I get a, you get invited to the parties and that's where you go, and that's where you make connections, but you gotta get invited, right? And I got invited to the Jewish Shabbat dinner. And um, so I go there and um, make an appearance and with my friends and, and they were treating me so nicely. It was, it was amazing how um, 
well, how courtesy they were towards me. But like at the time, like nobody knew who I was. I'm out there, like you know, living on a budget. I ain't supposed to be out there, you know. But once you make it inside the parties, you're not worried about money. But anyway, so um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, free drinks, free everything. I'm like, oh man, I actually saving money right now. So <laughs> you know, um. And so like I'm there, right? And people like walking by and looking at me. I'm like trying to figure out like what's going on. And um get back to LA. And oh, oh wait, wait, one more. And the Jewish rabbi, right, came up and like shook his hand and his camera came up and took a picture of us together. Right. He made sure he pulled me in. I'm like, all right, that was kind of weird, but I take it. <laughs> so a week goes by, I'm back in LA and I look at the um the newspaper, the LA Weekly, which is not the it's not the LA Times, the LA Weekly, and it has a picture of me because I have this um, snowboarding hat that I always wear, and um, this rabbi. I said, like, "Oh, I remember that picture that guy took, right?" I'm like, "Oh, that was nice, you know." And I read the caption, and it said, um, um, "Rabbi whomever and actor Idris um, shaking hands." I'm like, "Oh, that's why it was so nice to me." Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I look like Idris itself for the um, salt and pepper beard, but like. That's that whole, um, oh, we're black, we look alike, all of us look alike. Because people say that Aubriana and I, they're like, we can't tell y'all apart. Our yeah. hair is totally different. Our face yeah. is shaped different. We look yeah. totally different. I'm sure she's tall. Yes, but they're like, <laughs> like, they get us mixed up. How? You're not even trying. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right. So let me see if I can pull up this um thing for you. Okay. Oh, hold on. We gotta end the episode. Hold on. We have less in, less in the episode. Just hold on. All right. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, thank you so much, Charles, for coming on today and sharing your story about the Black Carol Cowboy documentary. Can you tell people where they can um? get more information about it or you know prepare for the grand release sometime this year where they can find you yeah and somewhere in this podcast if you can include that you know i want to thank um first of all i want to thank you two ladies for having me on your podcast um and then i want to thank um my my state of montana um that uh, montana film office actually was granted twenty thousand dollars to keep filming and so, and so that was nice and I got that and I used it so I can tell um, African-American stories that located within Montana. So I want to thank the Montana Film Office along with um, J.R. Redman, um, Damon Smitley, thank you, Allison, um, Bill, and um, out here in Oklahoma, and the loyal, the little Blancs, I want to thank the LeBlancs and um, Kenneth LeBlanc especially, um, Eagle, the Oklahoma Eagle, um, black newspaper been going on for a hundred years. Black Wall Street and um, and and my mama. I know I miss somebody, but <laughs> that I just want to put that in there. Of course. All right, tell us where we can find more information about the documentary. Where that's people can connect. You. Yeah, let's support you. Yeah, it's still um um some of the information is still in the works, but you can go to theblackcowboy.com. Um, Facebook is the best information you get is the black cowboy and then we have a unique um, photo page there and one thing I am working on now ladies I'm working on this um, website um, called black rodeo live and that's black rodeo live um, dot com and the mission of that documentary is to um, is to put different um, African-American organization that deals with horses or rodeos um, onto one central platform. And um, so people could know where to go, you know, where to go seek out these events because you don't know how would you get there. You know, and not only that, like um, I have a donation page, I do a feature story and then, and then uh, we hit the donating, donation button on this website, it goes directly to them. Mm -hmm. And so all the other stuff will be worked out, but we need to find ways to, um, uh, raise money into these um, organizations and in the African American community that still need to exist. Yeah, yeah, we we have a lot of the same thought processes, right? 
Well, all right. Well, thank you so much, Charles, for joining us for this episode today. And we'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Young Black Equestrians. Head over to our Facebook or Instagram pages and let us know what you thought about that episode. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and have the opportunity to be featured in our next episode. See you next week.